Today on the AI Breakdown Brief, AI has been used to discover a rare DNA sequence, Google releases new research on audio, and the G7 is talking about AI once again. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. For the last six months, a huge amount of the AI discussion has been around consumer tools. ChatGPT, mid-journey, even text-to-video, text-to-3D worlds. These are the types of things that people have been really engaged in discussing, which makes sense. It's the tools that consumers are using, and they're seeing how they can actually influence how they do their jobs and how they think about their futures. But there is an entire other strand of AI use cases that are simmering just around the corner that show potentially how this technology is going to disrupt industries far beyond just the basic of how we do our work. One of those areas is, of course, medical research, and recently, researchers from the University of California, San Diego, shared information about how they were able to use AI to identify an important DNA sequence, which is known as the Downstream Core Promoter Region, or DPR. This is a DNA sequence that's used in the activation of up to a third of human genes. Gene activation is a fundamental process that's related to growth, development, and disease. So what the team did was use machine learning to identify what they call synthetic extreme DNA sequences. These are highly specific DNA sequences that function in gene activation. They compared millions of DPR gene activation elements in humans as well as fruit flies and used that to find sequences that were active in humans but not in the fruit flies. Now amazingly, their AI models were successful in predicting the functionality of these rare sequences. Their models analyzed 50 million test DNA sequences, which would have been totally impossible using traditional methodology. While people are really excited about this specific research, I think they're even more excited about the way that it shows the viability of AI in medical research more broadly. Professor James Katanaga, who led the research, said, There are countless practical applications of this AI-based approach. The synthetic extreme DNA sequences might be very rare, perhaps one in a million. If they exist, they could be found using AI. Next up, we have new audio research out of Google. This is a project they're calling Soundstorm, which is a project for efficient parallel audio generation. Let's listen first to this clip. Did you hear about Google's paper on Soundstorm? Um, no, I must have missed it. What's, what's it about? Well, it's a parallel decoder for efficient audio generation. Uh, so it can even be used oh, yeah. to generate dialogues. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, like this one was generated by Soundstorm. Wait, what? So the big thing that makes Soundstorm interesting is just how fast it is. It can synthesize 30 seconds of sound in about half a second. It can do that because it's a non-autoregressive model, which means that it's not trying to guess each word in sequence, it is instead figuring out entire phrases at once. That makes it much more difficult to train, but once you are successful in training it, much faster. Another important aspect of this research is that it uses Spear TTS, which is another methodology, to be able to synthesize dialogue, not just individual speakers. That means you can create conversations where you can control what's said, who says it, and when they say it. Conversation generation is also extremely fast, with 30 seconds being able to be created in about 2 seconds. Now given the potential use case for this type of technology and scams or other nefarious uses, Google is thinking about whether there are ways to make it easier to detect that it is generated audio. Next up today, a story that serves as a reminder of just how hard it is out there for an AI company. We're very used to AI companies getting funding right now, but we're a little less used to them actually shutting down. Neva is a startup that tried to innovate a new type of search interface based on chat and AI as opposed to the traditional Google-style blue links. This weekend, they announced that they're shutting down the consumer search engine. And the reason, they said, is that although the technology was good, it's extremely hard to get consumers to switch their behavior around where they search. Now, the company says they're going to be pivoting to explore more enterprise use cases. But as we all discuss, especially AI regulation and and think about the balance between the need for protection with not wanting to just over-prioritize incumbents, it's a good reminder about how hard it is for those startups out there. Finally, there was a meeting of the G7 world leaders in Japan on Friday, and of course, AI was high on the agenda. According to Reuters, quote, the leaders agreed to have ministers discuss the technology as the Hiroshima AI process and report results by the end of the year, according to a summary of a working lunch. This shows, I think, two things. One, how serious AI is that it's on the agenda for the most important meeting of world leaders in the world. And two, just how likely to be behind they are given how long it takes them to wrap their heads around what's happening. That's it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you are enjoying this, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll be back soon for the main AI Breakdown.